Hello there, Michelle here and I have the pleasure of guest designing over at the Alleyway Stamps today. For my card I'm using this stamp set here, this is the all washed up stamp set by the Alleyway Stamps. Really really cute set full of lots of different sea creatures. I'm going to start off by doing the background for my card. So I'm going to do a little bit of ink smushing here and I'm going to use a various um, different distress inks. The first one here is Mermaid Lagoon and I've added that onto an Avery L stamp pocket. I basically just want a slick surface that I can pick up quite easily and this Avery L pocket seems to do the job for me. So I've added that onto the pocket and then I've just misted it with um, a mister bottle full of water and I'm just smushing that onto the cardstock here. This is some Tim Holtz watercolour cardstock. I am adding quite a bit of water to it so I wanted something that can kind of hold up to the amount of water. So as you can see I'm kind of just smushing that on. Um, I want most of the ink to be on the bottom right hand corner. Just cleaning my little surface here and then I'm going to um, dry it with my heat tool. So I'm going to dry it in between colours just so that they don't mix too much. They do mix a little bit which is quite nice. But I kind of wanted some different layers and different kind of textures and different um, depths of colour. So I'm just drying that with my heat tool here. So I'm going to repeat this process quite a few different times with lots of different colours of Distress ink. This one here is Broken China. And again I'm doing exactly the same thing, adding it onto the piece of plastic here, misting it with some water, adding it onto the watercolour cardstock and then drying it with my heat tool. Next up I'm using Peacock Feathers, again doing exactly the same thing, pouncing it onto the watercolour cardstock. I want to make kind of like a splashy look like it's in the sea. And with this one I did actually dry it in between and then the little bits of um, ink that were left on the plastic I just pounced that in again just because I wanted a slightly deeper colour and it kind of makes it a little bit drier in kind of texture I suppose. So I'm just adding those on there. And then I wanted to go quite a bit darker so I'm using chipped sapphire and again I'm just adding a little bit of water. Because I want this colour quite dark I'm actually adding less water than I was before. And because I want to kind of manipulate it to where I am, I'm actually using the sheet here and just actually kind of like sp spreading it with the actual sheet just so that it's in the place that I want it. I just wanted to add a little bit more here just onto the left, uh, left side of this panel. It does look a mess, I have to say. <laughs> um, looking at it here, it does look a real mess actually. Um, but again, I heat setting that. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the extra colour on top, which is the Mermaid Lagoon, kind of like the mid-tone colour. And it kind of just blends it a little bit more and, um, yeah, just kind of blends the colours together. And I think it does look um, quite a lot better. So again, just um, cleaning off my mat here and then I'm just going to heat set that one as well. Now I wanted to add a little bit of extra texture and it does actually kind of meld the colours a little bit better together. So I'm taking a fan brush here and then some more of the water just in the mini mister. Spraying that onto my craft sheet and then picking up the water with the brush and I'm just kind of um, hitting the paint brush with my hand, the back of my hand and adding some water droplets onto that panel and I've just left that aside to dry. And we're going to work on the little narwhal here. So this is the first time I've actually stamped this um, narwhal. So I'm just stamping it twice. It actually stamped perfectly the first time, but I just thought I'd better do it second time just in case. So this is Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. And I'm going to do a little bit of Copic colouring here. Now unfortunately, halfway through, my camera decided to turn itself off and also the sun kept coming in and out. Um, so I do apologise for that, but I was just going to talk you through how I'm doing the colouring here. I'm going from darkest to lightest. This is the W5. I wanted kind of like a, a warmish tone to the narwhal. And then I'm just going over that slightly and kind of pushing it further inside with the W4. And then I will go in with the W3. And again, pushing that in further, kind of colouring more of the image in. And as those kind of lay on top of each other, it does blend the darker colours into the lighter colours. 
and this is the W2 here and this is where unfortunately my camera decided to turn itself off and the sun came out. So I do apologise that I missed some of the colouring but to finish off the image I added in the W1 which was my lightest colour and then I added some W8, W7 and W5 just to the, um, the narwhal's husk and also the little dots there on the narwhal's head. And I fussy cut that out with some scissors and then I'm just placing that onto the panel here just so I can see where I wanted the sentiment to be. Now technically narwhals are mammals, they're not fishes but I still thought it was quite a cute sentiment to add the best fishes onto this. And I'm going to heat emboss this so I'm just adding some powder tool to my panel here just to get rid of any anti-static or I should say get rid of any static <laughs> using an anti-static tool. And then I've stamped that with some Versamark ink and then I'm just adding some WOW bright white embossing powder to this. Just flicking off the extra and then adding that back into the little tub there. And then I'm just going to use a dry paintbrush just to get rid of any of the extra kind of granules that possibly were laying around. And then I'm going to heat set that. And I don't know, as you can see, while I'm heat setting it, um, especially as I've added a lot of water to this cardstock panel, it has warped quite a bit. And the best way that I've found to actually get rid of some of this warping is to run it through my die cutting machine. I happen to have the cuttle bug and I use it if I was to die cut just a general kind of thin die. And I use a um, kind of metal shim as well. And I run that through a couple of times and it does get rid of quite a bit of the warping. And here, because obviously I don't want it to be warped when I add it onto my card, um, card base, I'm adding a ton of foam tape. I would usually use a foam sheet in this case if I'm kind of adding so much to it. However, I find that it still warps it slightly. I'm not sure if it's just the adhesive that I'm using or not, but um, I find that this foam tape is actually quite strong and it gets rid of quite a bit of the warping so I'm just adding a ton of that on taking off the backings I wish that I could do it this quick in real life but sadly I can't so this is an A2 white card base and I'm just popping that on and just pushing really really well just to try and get rid of any of that extra warping so I'm going to add my narwhal onto this as well and again I'm just using a little bit of foam tape here just to pop it up again so taking the backings off of that and then I'm just popping that onto the card. Just thought it was really cute. And then just because all narwhals have to have sparkly husks, <laughs> I decided to add a little bit of Wink of Stella on there. And then I'm adding a little bit of glossy accents to that as well. Just trying to get it to the end of the, um, the nozzle here just because this glossy accents is almost finished. I've just got a tiny little bit left in the tube. So that's my card finished for today. I hope you've enjoyed watching how I made it. Links to the products that I've used on the card will be in the description box on YouTube and also on my blog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.